What you guys got another video should you buy an old computer in 2024 it depends on whether the computer is compatible with windows 11 a lot of these old systems are not going to be compatible for windows 11 because of the system hardware requirements that microsoft have put in place now end of life for windows 10 doesn't happen till october 2025 and they've said that they will offer some updates uh, security updates at a cost as well so does that mean that these are still viable and you should still buy these? Well, it depends. Because of Microsoft's stringent requirements, this means that you're going to need an Intel 8th generation or newer to run Windows 11. And also, if it's an AMD system, it has to be uh, second generation Ryzen processors the, and beyond, basically newer to run windows 11 so this is going to cut a lot of these older systems out so as long as you understand that before you start purchasing a lot of this stuff because i don't think a lot of people do because people are still buying these old systems now there's nothing wrong with these systems they're going to work perfectly fine even after the end of life of windows 10 but that means you're either going to have to pay for security updates to microsoft or you're going to be using a outdated uh, system uh, which means it's not going to receive security updates the other option is you jump ship and use something like linux and that is pretty much it or you can use your old system for something else like for instance building your own nas in your old computer or maybe using it as a plex media server or something along those lines there's plenty of things you can do with these old systems and you can quite easily set these up so if you are going to be purchasing one of these, I would advise you to try to get at least an eighth generation or newer. And that way, at least you can put Windows 11 on it and keep that old PC going. And if you do, it's going to start costing you more money because the cost for eighth generation uh, systems are a lot more expensive than the older uh, fifth gen, sixth gen and so on. And remember, if it's an AMD system that you're buying, make sure it's a Ryzen 2nd gen and above. Otherwise, you are not going to be able to install Windows 11. That's assuming that you want to install Windows 11 on that system. And we'll talk about some of the other options that you have available to you if you already own an old computer or if you're buying an old computer. We'll talk about some of those options a little bit later on in the video. Now, another thing that I wanted to point out is in the latest version of Windows 11 24H2, Microsoft have made some uh, serious changes to it to stop the system from booting if it's got an older CPU. It basically uh, is going to block a lot of older computers that might have Windows 11 installed on them. And this is just testing grounds for Microsoft. They could roll this out for all of the unsupported hardware and block those from booting so bear that in mind as well if you've got an old computer and thinking about using the bypass method because it looks like microsoft is starting to clamp down on it because windows 11 is starting to have some major changes done to it they are now starting to roll out some big updates which will be coming very very soon in 24h2 and of course they're pushing their ai platform copilot and other ai that they're going to be using it's going to be basically on everything on that operating system so there's a couple of things you have to take into account when you're buying older systems and also that you might have older systems eventually you are going to be forced to uh, have a newer system to run windows 11 this is just the way microsoft are forcing it on people and this means a lot of people like businesses are going to really struggle because upgrading costs for replacing large numbers of machines due to incompatibility uh, presents a quite a big problem for companies also you've got this disruption and downtime for migrating data and applications to new machines if they upgrade and also security concerns by sticking with unsupported hardware exposes businesses to potential security vulnerabilities and feature updates and then you've got the reduced performance using older hardware that might struggle with some of the newer demands from their newer software and this is where operating systems like linux come in mx linux is another great option for people that might want to continue to use their old computer in 2024 and if you're looking at buying an older computer you can pick one of these old systems up pretty cheap 
and then you can install Linux on it. This is another option that will be available to you. You might want to run Windows 10 up until, say, October 2025, and then decide on installing Linux on it if you want to continue to use a PC, especially in today's climate where people are struggling to pay bills and pay their mortgage and rent. They can't afford to buy new computers, and this is going to be a lifeline for those people to be able to continue to use a PC. So this is an option and it is a valid option, but there is some things that you have to take into account, which we'll cover in a second. Linux Mint is another option that you can have. There is quite a few different options available on Linux, but I'm just going to give you some of my uh, personal favorites that I would suggest you try if you want to uh, try a different operating system. So it's not all doom and gloom. You can still continue to use those old systems, uh, whether it will be using an extended version of Windows 10 or, uh, you know, bypassing it on Windows 11. But if they block it, you can still use something like Linux. Pop OS is another great option for people that want to try something new. And again, it's not as hard as people make out. There's a lot of hardcore Linux users will try to turn people off of Linux because of the difficult side of it. It's not as hard as you think. If you spend a bit of time, maybe install it on a virtual machine and have a practice and get used to it, it's not as difficult as people make out. It's just the fact that it's a new operating system compared to Windows and you're going to have to learn a bunch of new different things. And there is different software requirements for both. So you might have to make some changes to your software list because they might not be compatible with Linux. Elementary OS is another great option for you. That's a really nice operating system as well. And these are genuine viable options that you can use in 2024 or even 2025 once end of life happens for Windows 10. The other option, like I said, is you can pay Microsoft to get security updates or maybe someone finds a way to work around that which they've done in the past. It's entirely up to you which path you take. I would recommend that you take a good long hard look of how long you can do that for. That will give you at least another three years after October 2025. Zorin OS is another great option available to you. There's another Linux distro which is always updated. It looks really, really nice and sharp. A decent alternative to Windows. And again, it's going to give your old PC a new lease of life in the sense of that you can continue to use it without spending any money. Now, Linux is not going to work for everyone. If you're a gamer and you play certain particular games, then you can check out the compatibility list. For instance, Fortnite, uh, you can see here we've got Valorant. These are pretty popular games. And if you are using Linux on these, it's not going to work. So if you're a hardcore gamer, and these games are a must for you, and you must play them, then Linux is not going to work for you. You're not going to be able to do it. It's not Linux's fault. It's to do with the anti-cheat that they use. And this is the big problem. There is quite a few games that are not going to work with Linux. And you can check the list. I'll try and leave a link in the video description if I remember, that some games are not going to be compatible. And you can check which games you do play. And if they are compatible, then Linux will work for you. It'll be perfectly fine. Remember, Linux is not Windows, and there's no point dressing Linux up to look like Windows because they're both totally different operating systems. If you jump ship to Linux, you're going to have to embrace it and learn it a little bit, and also try to learn new uh, software because some of the software is not compatible on Linux at all. So try to leave Windows behind if you are going to embrace Linux and basically learn it and take it for what it is and use the software that's available. Now, Windows 10 does end in October 14th, 2025, but Microsoft have said that they are going to extend, which I've already mentioned. And there's also another option which might interest you if you want to stay on the Windows platform, and it's going to be for Windows 10 you'll be able to use the Windows 10 Enterprise Edition LTSE 2021. And you can see that has extended end of life support right up until 2032, which is a long time away. So there's no need to panic. 
The other option is to upgrade your hardware. Again, if that is possible, Intel have made that quite difficult to make that compatible. You would need to probably buy another new motherboard chip and RAM to make it compatible with Windows 11. Or you can stay on an outdated version of Windows and continue to use it without security uh, updates uh, over its end of life cycle, which I wouldn't recommend. Or you can explore alternative operating systems like the ones I've mentioned. A lot of people always think that everyone will know this stuff, but they just don't. There's not a lot of technically minded people out there. They just buy a computer to use it. And unfortunately, they could end up buying a used old computer thinking it's going to be great for the next five years. And guess what? They find out uh, the hard way and get their fingers burnt. So if that is the case, then watch this video, share it with your friends, and hopefully they will understand uh, what is the requirements and what the need is and what the options are for you in 2024. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Hope this video has been useful to you. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I appreciate the support. Have a lovely weekend and I shall catch you in the very next video or I'll see you on the Discord server for a chat. Bye for now.